Okay, I mean, I'm loud naturally, but I mean, can y'all actually hear me out of the... Oh, okay, all right, praise the Lord, amen. Well, it's good to be back here with you, amen. You may be seated. When I grew up uh, in North... Miss I grew up in Northwest Mississippi, real close to Memphis, and we, didn't, we only had one local radio station there. It was more like a talk radio, and so most of the music and stuff that we would hear came off of one of the radio stations there in Memphis. And there used to be this radio station, I think it may actually still be there, I'm not sure if it's there or not, and maybe it's changed genre and all this, but um, it was called Magic 101.1. And But it used to have this tagline, it used to say, tune in, and it used to say, and rip the knob off. So what it was saying is once you tune in, you're supposed to rip the knob off of it. I, I visit you know, a lot of churches throughout my life, and there's a difference between people who sing as a prelude to a message and a praise team that sends an imitation. Because when an imitation is sent, a prophetic frequency is released that if you catch it, you can sense something has shifted and there'll be other people going around passing bubble gum and napkins and you'll be sitting there in tears running down your eyes and your heart being filled with something and they're going like dude why are you crying mm, that's right. and they'll be looking at you going like girl what's wrong with you and they've completely missed it because they were tuned into a different frequency yeah. we we just finished doing praise and worship yeah. praise is an imitation yeah. a worship is an acknowledgement yeah. we bow down proskuneo is the word that it actually uses it means to bow down before god but there was something that we said, and I want to make sure you don't miss it. Even when I don't feel it. <laughs> oh, Jesus. Hallelujah. I know this is not the message, but, but see, you don't have to feel faith. You just need to believe and move. And, and, and I didn't intend to start this way, but let, let me say, you know, because most of you know that I spent, you know, 30 some plus years in the military. I still teach part time, like twice a year and stuff like that. But the majority of my time, I was a green. Did I ever tell you? I don't know if I did. So I, 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 I've never told them that. OK, so, um, yeah, OK, I got to ease in there because I don't want people to look at me the wrong way. Amen. So my military training, I am actual Green Beret by training. For, you know, the, y'all, anybody know what that is? Special force and everything. And so I, I'm a I'm a trained sniper as well. And and along with that, uh, I was a certified what they call pathfinder, meaning that they would put you in an environment where nobody else can normally go. And then they send you and tell you, go find the path. And then they tell everybody else, this is the way you go. I come tonight as your pathfinder. Now. Now, I told you we were going to have a demonstration as part of what we do tonight. So now, I didn't bring your seed tonight because if you had enough faith like I believe, you, you went and turned your couch upside down when you got home. Because you, you're like, look, if it ain't but one penny left in the house, I'm going to find it. You, you dump the vacuum cleaner bag out and shake it out and, and sift through the dust to make sure you didn't pick up anything that was not coins. You're going to like, let me find some extra right here because tonight I came to receive. <laughs> they, there's a handout there as, as we did last night. That handout is for your purpose, your benefit. The whole intent of it is so that you have it as a reference point for you. Amen. Uh, tonight's subtitle, as we talked about, is... Canaan is expecting me. And, and, and there's a subtitle on it that says, A Kingdom Reservation. Yeah. Tell your neighbor, say, I'm ready, I'm ready, I'm ready. I'm ready. Say, this, say, Father, I thank you for the power of the word, for the gift of grace, and the power of faith. I'm more than a conqueror. I am triumphant. I am victorious. Every faith fight I'm in, all I do is win. I am a giant killer, and I don't know how to lose. Yeah, tell your neighbor, say, I'm taking territory. I'm taking territory. Amen, 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 amen. Uh, today was a good day. I had time to just kind of meditate on the word. We're going to start off in Genesis 12 and verse 2 tonight. Uh, I'm going to do a quick review. Say your neighbor, say, real quick. 
so now if you weren't here last night, I'm actually to go back and listen to last night because I won't have time to repeat everything we did and tell your neighbor that's sitting next to you, said, now don't slow him down tonight. Now I want to get everything new. I want to get everything. Amen. 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 Genesis 12, 2. I'm going to read from the King James. Then we'll look at it in Amplified. And it says, now the Lord has said to Abram, get out of your country from your family and from your father's house to a land that I will show you. I will make you a great nation. I will bless you and make your name great. And you should be a blessing. And I will bless those who bless you. The Amplified of verse 2 says, And I will make of you a great nation. And I will bless you with abundant increase of favors. And make your name famous and distinguished. And you will be a blessing dispensing good to others. We said last night that the primary objectives of everything that we were going to look at was, number one, create an abundance and increase thought life. Tell your neighbor, say, I'm changing the way I think. Okay, so now how many of you went and, and, and got your keys? Yes. Amen. The keys for your flesh to remind you. Now, and, and I've done this multiple times. Matter of fact, the car I'm in tonight, I key probably about two years before I bought that car. And I was telling the minister tonight, when I, I flew to Chicago to go get the car, and it was, and it was being managed through a private uh, dealership, but there was an individual who owned it. So I get off the, you know, the, plane I go over there and uh, I went by my bank and so uh, because I financed the car for myself okay let me say it a different way so instead of going through the traditional bank I went to my bank where I had my money and told them I wanted a loan on my own savings so all the interest came back to me tell your neighbors I'm learning something I'm learning something I'm learning something yeah yeah no no I financed my own one and so uh the guy, and so the guy at the bank, he said, now, Mr. Shaw, he said, you know, you're in good standing with us. He said, you know, you don't have to do that. I know I don't have to. But that's my request. He said, what do we need to do to be able to get it to where, you know, you get the money from us? I said, nothing. I said, because you keep the interest when I do it that way. I, I want the interest on it. This is my desire. So I, I get all this, and I get there, and I'm talking to this gentleman, and this gentleman mentions to me, and uh, he said, how are you doing? He said, the, the owner of the vehicle is here. He just wanted to meet you and everything. I said, okay. And so he came over, and he said, I said, hey, how are you doing, sir? And I grabbed his hand. He said, wait a minute. He said, you said that, sir. He said, something was stuck in me. He said, what you learn to say, sir, like that? I said, well, sir, I'm a military officer, and da, da, da. He gets talking. He said, you know, I'm a retired general. I said, oh, I said, I didn't know that. He said, yeah, I had this car built in Germany. I said, oh, I said, that's nice and everything. He said, you know, it doesn't have many miles when I said, yes, sir. I said, that's one of the reasons why I was interested in it. He said, you know, this thing's been paid for. I said, all that. He said, he said, all that extra money, he said, is going to the dealership. I said, okay, and everything. He said, but you know what we're going to do? I said, what we're going to do? He said, we're going to cut the price. I said, all right. I said, all right. I, and I just said, I said, praise God. He said, you said, praise God. He said, he said we're going to cut the price in half. <laughs> Tell your neighbor, say, he must be in Canaan. He must be in Canaan. So wait a minute, so I need a dealership with the car and a check from them. Because you got to remember, I already had the check because I had it made out for a certain amount. So they had to cut a check back. Okay, all right. Tell your neighbor, say, now, now, in my church, I teach them every once in a while, whenever something comes out and it hits you, and if you didn't quite get it, but you hear somebody else shout, I want you to say ricochet. Tell, tell your neighbor, say, I'm going to get something some of that. Tell your neighbor, say ricochet. Yeah, yeah, so when that blessing hit your neighbor and you didn't quite get all of it, you just by faith said, Lord, ricochet, because they caught something, and I want to make sure I get it too. <laughs> let, me, let, me, let me keep going. Let me keep going. Number two, we're going to teach the power of the seed and the greenhouse effect. Yeah, we, we went through that last night, right? So that you have the ability to sow in any season and get a harvest. So the next time the devil tries to tell you, you don't need to give. Let me listen. The daily seed said the daily seed. We didn't get a chance to go through all that. I'm going to hit that first here in just a second in the review. And I'm telling you, if you catch this, you should never, ever see Pastor Abel without a seed in your hand. No, no, no. I'm, I'm, I'm trying to help you because, see, I'm giving you the practicum of the theory. Because when the Lord told me, God said, now, every time you see Pastor Run, you put a seed in his hand. I said, Lord, every time? He said, every time you sin. So when I was seeing him at church, so what I had to do, because I wasn't fully disciplined in how I managed my finances yet, right? But I had confidence to know that what the voice of God sounded like on the inside, that I was willing to trust God. I say, trust God. trust God. And so in the early stages of this, what I would do, I was getting paid every two weeks. So what I would do is when I get paid, I said, okay, Lord, I said, now 
I wouldn't own the dollar a day yet, but he told me every time I knew I was going to see him at least three times, two times that I physically saw him because I was in children's church working as a volunteer. Amen. Okay, amen. amen. Working as a volunteer. Yeah. Yeah, see, see, churches should have too many volunteers. And, and the reason we don't is because most of the time people don't understand the blessing on the Levitical priesthood. Because if you understood that compounded blessing that comes on you from serving both God and your priest. Yeah, okay, all right. We, we, we will keep going, keep going. And so I would take $20 out when I get paid. Now, maybe you weren't there because at, at that time, like if I was going to get paid on Friday, my paycheck was normally spent on Thursday. And so I had to learn how to tell my paycheck that you weren't going to be like the previous paycheck. So I would take $20 out, go to the bank, and I would have them give me four fives, and I would put it in envelopes, and then I would write on the envelope, no matter what, do not open. Then I put that envelope inside of another envelope that says, this is your harvest, do not open, and then I put it in my top drawer. And so whenever I would see Pastor Run, I'd take one of them, see him on Sunday morning, said, the Lord just told me to be a blessing to you. And, you know, he, he'd receive and speak a bar, and then the same thing. But there have been times when I ripped the first envelope open, and then that second one, I would be like, oh, God, okay, this is the Lord. Hey, no, no, I'm just saying, that's where I was. Five dollars worth of gas? You know, I mean, I, I know you can't do it now, but, you know, I was one of the ones to go in, you know, let me have five on three, okay? Amen. Praise God. <laughs> You get five on three, you might make it, you might not make it up to the West Bank inside. You know? but, but that's just how it was. And because I don't want you to think that you got to start off in your six figures. I want you to start off in your covenant. All right, well, let's give it. Number, number three, I want to show you the requirements to sow. And last night, I, I empowered you to sow. And so you didn't have a reason to believe. Now, if you use your faith, God met that seed last night with a harvest today. Okay, all right, all right. Number four, demonstration of power in the blessing and the covenant. And tell your name is in faith is always required. You will never possess a harvest that does not start with a promise from God. I'm going to say it again. You never possess a harvest that does not start with a promise from God. So when you all of a sudden just start getting stuff and you're not real sure, one time Pastor Jenny and I got this check in the mail. It was a legitimate check. I called the bank that the check was drawn on. And, you know, and I was like, okay, so God, this is a real check. And I called the bank. The bank's like, yeah, the check's good and everything. And it, and it just came to us. You know, and we've been praying, you know, checks in the mail. Y'all said that in y'all time. You know, I'm calling them checks in the mail. And so, but I didn't know the source of the check. But I mean, you know, hey, it's a check. I mean, it's good. You know, what you going to do with it? Come on. You tell your neighbor, you say, you're going to go cash that check. And so I'm on the way to bank, and I hear the Spirit of God says, do not cash that check. I was like, uh, okay, Lord, is there something wrong? You know, so I do a little more investigation. So I decided to go to my bank, talk to the manager. I said, I got this check in the mail. I said, it looks like it came from some ministry, you know. And it, but, but God told me, God said, you didn't sow a seed for that, so you know I didn't send it. I'm going to say that again. God says, you didn't sow a seed for that, so you know I did not send it. I go to the bank, I'm talking to the bank, and he says, Mr. Shaw, he says, yeah, he said, listen, he says, you are accurate. This is a legitimate check. He says, but if you notice, there's two signature lines. They wanted you to sign on both. One was to cast the check. The other one was to open up an EFT for the outgoing. It was a check scam to where you deposit the check into your account, but you authorize them access to the account once you check it. You know, so I tore it up and everything, you know, and we realized. Because, see, I, I'm not looking for harvest if I didn't sow a seed because I'm a good sower. Yeah. Right. See, see, none tithers should be walking around going like I'm really expecting God to bless me. Why? Why, why are you asking that question? Yeah. You don't meet the condition. Yeah. Oh, 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 that, that ain't very Christian-like. I thought good lo God loves everybody. He does. But he only blesses his children who are obedient to his word. Now, 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 I'm not saying he didn't cut your air off and nothing like that, you know, so you, you good. But, yeah, you know, because I want nobody going out here, oh, Lord, Jesus, my air going to be cut off at 2.30 tomorrow. That's not what I'm saying. But you can't be looking for the hundredfold if you haven't even met the condition for what you've sown to even be a seed. Okay, let me say it this way. Money does not convert to seed until the international transaction of the tide validates it. 
See, your tithe validates if what you're giving to a ministry is seed. Because without it, it's a payment. See, 9.9% is nothing more than you giving to a nonprofit. But see, when you hit that 10%, then the spirit realm says, now everything else comes in, convert it to seed. And then then is now registered on the kingdom transaction, not the natural one. So every time you skip a tithe and you keep trying to figure out what happens in between that. Now, Luke 8 and 11 says, now the parable is this. The seed is the what? Word of God. We said last night that the seed is the sacrificial expectation and evidence of God's dominion in the earth, right? Yeah. All right, so now let's, let's take a look at this. We talked about tonight being putting me in a place to where I'm going in the Canaan. Tell your neighbor, said, I'm going in the Canaan. Canaan is a representation of the best of what God has. It is what God's promise is. It is God's full intent. It is God's generational blessing that moves all the way down from Abel to Abraham or Abram plus I am. That's what it means, right? It says Abram plus God. Abraham is Abram plus I am. So in other words, he's saying then it goes from there to Isaac. Then it goes from Isaac and we see it going all the way down. To Jacob. And you see the blessing of Genesis 26 as on Isaac. It says even in a dry famine time period, he sowed and still received and reaped a hundredfold. So you can't go out here and talk about, well, you know what's going on with the economy. I'm waiting on the feds to make a change to the interest rate so things can get right for me to buy my house. You ain't buying the house. You're receiving one. See, you got to make this thing a spiritual transaction before the natural one will ever process through. Okay? Tell your neighbor, say, so Joshua chapter 1 and verse 2, it says, Moses, my servant, is dead. Now, therefore, arise, go over this Jordan, you and all this people to the land which I'm giving to them, the children of Israel. Tell your neighbor, say, God has given it to me. All right, so a couple things you need to understand from Canaan expecting you. Number one, Canaan is already in fear of God's people. Turn with me to Joshua chapter 2, if you will. Joshua chapter 2. And maybe they'll put it up on the screen for you, amen. But I know y'all are good Bible-toting, pew-jumping folks, amen. Y'all probably already have your own with you, amen. In case you didn't, amen, it's on the screen in front of you probably somewhere, amen. Joshua chapter 2, verse 8. Joshua chapter 2 and verse 8. It says, Now before they lay down, she came up to them on the roof, and she said to the men, I know that the Lord has given you the land, that the terror of you has fallen on us, and that all the inhabitants of the land are faint-hearted because of you. For we have heard how the Lord dried up the water of the Red Sea for you when you came out of Egypt and what you did to the two kings of the Amorites who were on the other side of the Jordan, Sheon and Og, whom you utterly destroyed. And as soon as we heard these things, our heart melted. Neither did they remain any more courage in anyone because of you. For the Lord your God, he is God in heaven above and on earth beneath. Wait a minute now. A whole generation died. In fear of these folks. And these folks are in fear of you. Come on. Forty years pass by. A generation dies off because they think, well, I don't know if we can do it. You can't. But God can. God has. And God shall. S H A L L. Tell your neighbor, say, God has done it for me already. So then we have to teach you how to receive. Yeah. Amen? Yeah. All right. Number three. Number two. Canaan is a system change. <laughs> it's a system change. system change. When you read in the New Covenant, you see the word world quite often. Pastor Ava even mentioned it when she was there uh, in Texas with us and during the heat. Praise God. And one of the things that you see a lot of the time when you see the world, that word world translates to the Greek word cosmos. K-O-S-M-O-S, -O -S, and that word cosmos means system, how things function, how things work. So when you step into Canaan, tell your neighbor, say, I'm switching systems, I'm switching systems. Yeah, see, you're moving from information to revelation. Okay, you move from purchasing and buying to receiving. Uh, and you move, watch it, you move from working per hour to sowing and reaping. Tell your neighbor, say, it, something is shifting, something is shifting. Now, number three, Canaan has the real fruit of the land. Yeah. Tell your neighbor, say, real fruit, real fruit. Real fruit. I, I, I want to do an example because I, I want to encourage your faith tonight. Can I do that? Yeah. So I, I bought 
a couple boxes of fruit up here, just for an example. Just some simple fruit. Okay, your neighbor says, just some simple fruit. Okay, amen. So uh, I'll tell you what I'm doing. Yeah, that's a good way to do that. Because, um, listen, husbands, can I speak to husbands for just a second? Now, now, all the women, y'all don't even hear this, okay? But I'm just, I'm just talking to the husbands. I know how we can be sometimes. See, I put myself in that category. Amen? And, and God has given you an assigned position. Can't nobody take it from you. Now, I know the world wants to talk about, you know, everybody being equal and all that. And the Bible says there's neither male nor female. There's neither Jew nor Christ. I understand that. But God does call the husband to be the head of the house. Now, that don't mean you're the head of the woman. Yeah, don't confuse the, the two there. Amen? And you got a good wife. She will she let you know, too. Amen. Praise the Lord. Amen? All right. Now, but it does require your agreement. Matter of fact, and Peter, is, I call it a two-party check. God says he can't even hear the prayers that you're praying because of your wife's tears. Now, now, I'm not here to try. I'm not passing judgment on the husband. I'm just trying to show you that if, if husbands, if we take our place as gathering fruit, the whole household will gather. Amen. So for this example, if you all will allow me, I'm just I'm going to use two husbands at this for the night. Is that OK? Yes. It, 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 yeah, it, I'm asking, is that OK to everybody? Yes. Why the husbands ain't saying yes? Uh, husbands, amen. <laughs> amen. Talking to all the husbands. Okay. All husbands in the house, raise your hand. Raise your hand. All husbands in the house, raise your hand. Okay. All right. I see y'all there. All right. So, you know what? I, this is perfect. I'm just going to use both the brothers. Y'all okay if I use both the brothers? All right. So, so Sherman, Herman, both of y'all, y'all come up. And, and for this example, y all, y all, each one of y'all can stand right here for a second, okay? For this example, for you, tell your neighbors I'm going into Canaan. So now the first thing that God had to do, God had to prove himself that there was stuff in the land. All right, so you know, come, come down right, right here. Y'all just, just stand right there. Now, just be cool right now. There you go. Y'all yeah, right. like, like your guard in the door or something right now. So y'all just, yeah, just be cool right there where you are right now, all right? Now, we're going to go to Numbers. They're going to hang out for, right here for a second, all right? Tell your neighbor, say, to Joshua, Joshua and Caleb. And all right, so now go with me to Numbers. I know y'all know this already, but y'all okay if we read it so we can't pretend like we made it up? <laughs> Let's go to Numbers chapter 13 with, real quick. Numbers chapter 13. We know all of a sudden God gives instruction to Moses. He tells him to send a representative from all of the 12 tribes. The 12 tribes actually come out of Israel, who later, you know, Jacob, whose name later turned to Israel. And so all of a sudden now we, we see all the other 10. So like pretend like the other bad 10 right here. I'm not going to have any of you all come up for that because these are the disobedient ones. Okay. Now, but they going over with, tell your neighbor, say, Joshua and Caleb. Okay, so they go in, and then we're going to pick up the story. Tell your neighbor, say, but I'm in real time. I'm living this. you living it. Tell your neighbor, say, open your imagination. See, I, I've always had a vivid imagination. That was one of the things God gave me as, as a young child. I mean, and, and just, you know, and I talk too much as a child. My, my, everybody in my family used to say it. They're like, boy, you talk too much. And my grandmother was the only one who would make a prophetic statement of it. She used to say, praise the Lord. God's going to give you something good to say one day, baby. <laughs> and everybody, everybody always said, I mean, my aunts, my uncles, everybody. I mean, I could be saying something like that. They'd be like, boy, you just talk too much all the time. Shut up and go there. And if my grandmother heard any of them saying it, she'd be like, praise the Lord. God going to give you something good to say one day. That was Mama Hattie. I, mean, she was Mama Hattie. I said, Mama Hattie was a prophet. We didn't even know it back then. Amen. But she just, she would just keep saying, and they'd be like, and so, you know, I, but I have this vivid imagination. And so I could read, I learned to read books without pictures and I could see it in color. Yeah. So when, when I was taught the word of God, and then my pastor told me, I don't forget when I first heard him talk about it, he said, you got to understand something. You were in a kingdom. All of a sudden that thing came alive to me. And I mean, I can read my Bible now. Yeah. And read it in color. Yeah. Married folks, go, go read Song of Solomon yes, yes, sir. with a vivid imagination. You'll be married a hundred years. Yes, you won't let sickness get anywhere near your spouse. You're going to be like, oh no, this is the best place to be on earth right now. Yes, Amen. All right, so y'all come on back. Amen. Y'all see y'all looking at them eggs again. Y'all got to get yourself in trouble. All right, now here we go. It says in verse 27, then they told him and said, we went to the land which you sent us. It truly flows with milk and honey. And this is the fruit. All right. So this is the fruit. So now Joshua and Caleb, yes. along with the other 10 hard-headed folks, the Bible says they brought it back. Now, this is my opinion. 
I believe Joshua and Caleb said, hey, wait a minute. Let's take some of the fruit back. So the box of fruit, I'm just going to have y'all to go to the box of fruit for a second. Can you just want to just go to the box of fruit? Amen. Praise the Lord. Now, where you're standing right there, you can open the box. It's okay to open the box. Open the box. Amen. Yeah, just shake it loose, whatever, break it. It shouldn't be any tape or anything on it. Amen. Just real simple. Amen. And then you're going you're gonna to hold the fruit up to the, to the people. Tell your neighbor, say, and the fruit in it is real. Yeah, you can open the bag up. That's okay. You can open the bag up. Amen. And now, now y'all can keep this fruit after we finish the example, okay? Well, amen. amen. And, and the receipt is in it. So if you need to take it back, you can take it back, go buy you some cologne or go buy you a shave bag or something for yourself. Amen. If, you, if, if you're smart enough to do that. All right, now. So now. But, but, but like, I know I said the receipt's in there. You can take it back. I'm sure it'd be okay if you take it back. <laughs> okay. <laughs> now, but well, hold on a second. <laughs> Tell your neighbor said the fruit is real. Tell your neighbor said a land flowing with milk and honey. Now, well, hold on a second now. If, if if Joshua and Caleb, I, I mean, if Sherman and Herman, I, I mean, if, if the congregation of CLBC oh, yes. is, is seeing the fruit that God says is there, tell your neighbor, say, we're about to take the land, we're about to take the land, we're about to take the land, amen? No, no, I mean, because I need to get this on the inside of you that you can see the land is flowing with milk and honey. All right. Y'all can sit down. Amen. Amen. I, I, I receive. Amen. Praise God. <laughs> amen. Amen. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That, that's not a trash bag, by the way. Oh, okay. All right. Just me. Amen. <laughs> no. <laughs> So, I assume it don't look like y'all going to be returning that now. <laughs> now, now, now. What? <laughs> Pastor Ava said she thought we were doing grapes tonight. Amen. Now, now, now stay with me for a second. I want you to stay with me for a second here now. Now, now, now watch this. You said, Pastor, why, why, why did you do that? Well, num number one, I told you all, volunteers get accelerated harvest. I just thought I'd throw that out there. Amen. Praise the Lord. Now, 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 now you don't, don't, don't feel some kind of way now because, see, if you can't celebrate with them, you're going to be like the Korah folks on the wrong side of the pit. But, but I'm trying to get you to see, watch this, how much labor, how many hours per week did they work for that? How much savings did they have to set aside for that? How, oh, Jesus. How much overtime did they have to work to get that? It was Freely. Yes. Yes. Tell your neighbor, say, it's got to be more than one piece of fruit on that tree. <laughs> yeah, glory, glory, glory. Yeah, tell your, neighbor, tell your neighbor, say, I'm receiving, I'm receiving. Tell your neighbor, say, that fruit is real, that fruit is real. Yeah, that's what it's real. Listen, listen, listen. I, I'm going to take you beyond what you can pay for. I'm going to take you beyond your salary. I'm going to take you beyond just where your family was. I ain't going to just move you across the track. I'm going to give you the land the track run through. Amen? Tell your neighbor, say, that's my inheritance. That's my inheritance. Now, amen, amen, amen. Now, now watch this, watch this. The Bible says... That that land was set aside for the descendants of Abram, later Abraham. 
And we, we're going to go back and we're going to look at Abram. Now, in 13 and 14, we see him after he gets the initial conversation of verse, of verse 12. And then he gets the conversation of 13 and God sends him on a place and gives him a direction and doesn't give him a map, doesn't give him a brochure. He just moves out on a word alone. See, and you got to get disciplined enough that when God speaks a word through your fivefold and all you have is that word, I believe God. Uh, uh, listen, I, I didn't I don't tell them what to sing. I mean, I'm a guest. I'm just here. And then they get up and they sing a song. I know he's working. Even when I can't see it. And even when I can't. Who got a who has a house? I almost said who got a house, but who has a house now? They never said, but Pastor, I can't see it. But watch this. If you say it, you will. See, you don't have to see it first. You have to say it first. And then when you say it, you're going to see it. I, I just need you to believe the book. I mean, believe the word. I mean, believe the man. Because the Bible says in John chapter 1 and verse 14 that that living word became flesh. Come on. Okay, hold on. I got to calm down. I'm getting excited. Amen. Hallelujah. I forgot to see what time we started. Oh, my goodness. So, oh, okay. Okay. All right. Okay. Here we go. All right. Here we go. Now, no, the next one is this. Right this. Canaan requires you having your right identity. Let me say it a different way. Because the giant's going to check your ID. Yes, sir. The, the giant's going to want to know who you are. Who, who you to be coming telling me I got to leave. See, if you're going to take a look at 1 Samuel chapter 17, it's one of my favorite books I like to read. And, you know, David had this thing about him because, see, David was already upset. Now, I got I to I gotta, tell you, David said, I got to imagine, I got to imagine. Now, now, I don't have time to go read from chapter 16 when they first have the encounter. The prophet comes out, asks Jesse to go and get all his boys and everything together. And listen now, now isn't it bad yeah. that when all of a sudden God's getting ready to do something supernatural and your own family don't even think you should be considered? They, they go, everybody but you. They, they go, well, you know what, well, everybody else, everybody else finished their degree, but, but, but you know, but, but David. Come on. You, okay. Come on. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And all of a sudden, the prophet says, no, not this one. No, not that one there. It's not that one. And he keep going. He, he said, he said, he said, Jess, do you have another one? There's somewhere now, now, now listen now, now there's something about praise and worship folks now you know they, they can they can be a little out there at times amen because see they, they, they're shout when nobody else will yeah. amen you know so they go and send for David and say hey David yeah yeah your dad's asking for you David don't go shower he don't go shave he don't go put no cologne on he comes straight out the field with the sheep and walk up in there but yeah yeah, yeah what's up what's up y'all got a party you didn't invite me and David just walked right up in the place. Y'all know he did? He like, y'all spent nine hours getting dressed and everything, and God came looking for me. David sit there. He said, now, all right, go ahead. What are you supposed to do? Now, here's the thing. David was humbled a little bit, though. Because, see, when the king called for him, now, y'all know he's been anointed with oil. God has blessed him. Tell you, David says, because Canaan belongs to me. So now, David wasn't wrong in that perspective. But David didn't handle it the right way at first. Because when they came for him the first time, David packed up everything. They said, now, David, you're just going to be there for a few days. David got him. Y'all remember them old trunks we used to take to college? He got five trunks. He done packed them up, put padlocks on them. And y'all know he picked up his guitar. And he walking by his brother. Look, I'll holler at y'all later. All right, David, praise the Lord. Hey, man, I'm going to king call for me. And then all of a sudden, they sent him back home. Come on. Oh, well, uh. I, I thought I was staying at the palace. Well, nobody tell you you're staying at the palace. We just want you to come play for the king. So then he get come back. So now watch this. You know his brother saying something? Because that's just what the world does. Oh, okay. I'm saying. You, you, you got rejected the first time when you applied for the house. And everybody now that's over there where you live, talking, I thought you were moving and everything. You, first of all, they ain't your friends. Because a real friend would have been like, baby, that's all right. Let me tell you something. Go again. Amen. The devil don't have enough nose that can overcome one yes from God. You'll go back again. Go back again. 
We, and we just kept on going. And we just kept on decreeing. We rolled in the house after house and everything. No, y'all looking for houses? Listen, uh, let me give you another instruction. Now, I don't even know if they still have them at the post office, but they used to have the change of address forms. They still have them. All right, so now, here's your neck. How many of you got your key? Now, if you don't have the key, don't do this next part. But if you have the key, I want you to do this. Tell your neighbor, say, I'm going into Canaan. I'm going into Canaan. I'm going into gated communities. I'm going into the new neighborhood. I'm going into the place where they said our kind don't normally go into. I'm going in. I'm going to walk on it. And then God's going to transfer it over to me. Second Samuel 17 and 11. Second Samuel. We read Psalm 16 last night. So let's look at 2 Samuel. This is the second. This is the primary scripture that Pastor Jenny and I used to buy the two houses that we bought. Amen? 2 Samuel 17 and 11. Now, I got to read it like it is because I got it written in my Bible this way. It says, Moreover, I will point a place for my people, Tony and Regina, and will plant Tony and Regina, that Tony and Medrina, Regina may dwell in a place of Tony and Regina's own, and move no more. Nor shall the sons of wickedness oppress Tony and Regina anymore as previously. Since the time that I commanded judges to be over my people, Israel, and have caused Tony and Regina to rest from all your enemies. Also, the Lord tells me that he makes Tony and Regina a house. That's how we read that. That's how we confessed that. Then we went and got the key. And then we went to the post office. Now, now listen to me. I got a change of address form. Now, see... The first part we're doing is we're taking the seed of the word and we're putting it into your soul. Is right. uh, your spirit already is in agreement because right. it, it's already calling out to the deep. Yeah. But your soul is the thing that's blocking yeah. your flesh from doing what the spirit has already given. Yeah. So we got to train your soul up to be mature. Yeah. Tell your neighbors, I have a mature soul. Yeah, your mind, your will, your emotion, your intellect, your imagination. You have to control that thing so that when you hear 36, 24, 36, your mind don't go off running and chasing after something. I know I set you up a little bit with the Jet Magazine and everything, but but see, a mature mind be like, I ain't thinking about that no more. See, get to a point where you don't have to brag on your past. I was talking to a brother one time, you know, and we were talking about people being delivered and everything. And, and the first thing out of his mouth, he said, boy, I remember. Ooh, I used to drink folks up under the table. I, I mean, I'm like, what? Okay, what, what does that have to do with it? They ain't got no blessing on it. They ain't got no anointing on it. Ain't no grace on it. it ain't benefiting nobody. All that is you thinking about what you used to do. And I thought God had killed that man. So anything you daydreaming about is a lie because that's all Satan brings up. Okay, all right. Let's see your neighbor say, I'm headed into Canaan. Take the, take the change of address form, and in the old address, you put your current address there. Now, how many going to actually go do it? I mean, because I don't want to be saying it just to be saying How many going to actually go do it? Okay, see, I got less hands than folks who said they wanted a house. Okay, and in the new, where it, where it says moving to, I want you to get a picture of a house as a placeholder. And don't mail it. Put it on the refrigerator. And every time you walk by, you all, I want you to say, this is my old house, and this is what God has given me in Jesus' name. And then whatever scripture you're using, be it this one we just read, be it Psalm 16, I don't, I don't care which one you use. And say, I call those things that be not as though they are, and you speak to it every day. Every day. Every time you go in the refrigerator to get out some milk, you speak to it. Every time you go in the refrigerator to get out an egg, you speak to it. Every time you go in the refrigerator. Because see, by putting it in the refrigerator, I'm hitting it where your habit already is. Yeah. Because you know you already have to go in. I'm not saying you over but I'm just saying you already go to the refrigerator multiple times a day. And then teach the children to speak to it. Yeah. Every time they go for a juice box, that's like 24-7. Uh -huh. You tell them, say, you now, when you go get that juice box, amen, you speak to that new house and say, God, I thank you for my own bedroom, and I got my own bed, and I don't have to sleep with my sibling. Yeah, that's right. Yes, sir. Tell, tell your neighbor, say, I'm, I'm learning something, I'm learning something. That key, listen, listen, when you take this key and you go look at houses, what I want you to do, I want you to go as far as you can without being illegal. I want you to walk up to the door and put the key right up to it and twist it and then take it back, put it in your pocket and say, God, I thank you that it's open for me and then go on in. Because see, this is your new house. This is what you're going to have to start doing. All right. Can I give a testimony? Pastor Jenny and I were bleeding for a house. We lived in Brandon at the time, and there was this new community in this house. And so we went to go and, and look at this house and everything. Now, by the way, let me just clarify this. I, I'm not, this is not an instruction. This is a, an actual example, but I'm not telling you to go do this part. 
Okay, I want to make sure I clarify that. Amen. It's on, it's on tape, so y'all heard me say that. And so we went and looked at this house, and we were like, man, we really like this house and everything, you know. And so we went in, and I was like, I said, God, I said, I just, I feel like this is our home. You know, this is where we're supposed to be and everything. And so we went and everything, and so they showed us around and everything, you know. Now, now they, put, they put furniture and stuff. There wasn't no furniture or anything in there at the time. And so uh, when we were getting ready to leave, you know, I unlocked one of the windows. I, I told you from the very beginning, <laughs> but I did. And so that later that later that evening, we called some friends of ours and said, "Hey, let's go. I want, we want to invite y'all over." For <laughs> I'm telling you the truth. I'm telling you the truth. I've been for Amen. I, I, kept, I repented. Amen. But 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 that night we had dinner in the new house. So we pulled up and everything, and I told him, I said, look, I'm going to go unlock the back door and make sure everything okay. And so and I climbed in through the window and came in, you know, and I opened the door. And then I, we, had, we had another couple with us, and I said, we're going to have dinner in it by faith, you know. And so we had, we had a table there, you know, we sat down, we ate dinner. And I said, hey, brother, you want something else to drink? I said, I got up, walked into the fridge. There wasn't no refrigerator there, but I walked over to where the refrigerator was supposed to be, opened the door. And I, yelled, I said, hey, you want a Coke or Pepsi or a Sprite? I said, we got some juice, too. I said, well, hold on. I said some grape juice and some orange juice. You know, and I closed it, brought it out there, came back out to the table, poured it in thing. I said, you want anything? You want some more ice? I said, I'm going to go get some ice. I got back up, went, walked out of there. I said, look, let's show you the bedroom. And then we walked back there in the bedroom. I said, man, I said, look at that armor right there. I said, you like that armor? And boy, and, and Clayton, Clayton was in it too, but Clayton was like, ooh, that's some good wood, man. I like that right there. He said, man, he said that night. And Sister Angie go like, man, where y'all get that bed spread from right there? And we were like, oh, I think she bought that over at Dillard's and everything. She was like, man, that's really nice. And everything. I mean, so we, we just sit, we sit there, we watch. I said, y'all want to watch some TV for a little bit before we go? They said, yeah. So, you know, we're leaving and everything, you know. And I, walk, and I let them go out and I lock the door up and everything. I said, well, look, I'm going to go out the back door. <laughs> I'll meet y'all around front. Hey, amen. I wasn't going to include nobody else sitting on it, you know, hey, amen. And to, they don't even know that even to this very day. Amen. Praise the Lord. I climbed back out the window. Amen. I pulled the window down. Amen. Praise the Lord. Went back the next day when they were open. Amen. Watch. I just want to walk around the house. Amen. Went back there to that room and locked that window right back. Amen. <laughs> now, now, listen. Don't you do that. But I'm just trying to get you to see. I can see it. I had already possessed it. Amen. Now, we didn't get that house, and I got the Lord telling me that. that, that ain't sure. <laughs> but God did give us a house, amen, praise the Lord, amen. In that same city, he gave us a house, amen. He didn't give me that one, amen. God's like, now nah, you know you were not supposed to go in that house, amen. <laughs> go, <laughs> tell your neighbor, say, I got to change systems, I got to change systems. <laughs> go, <laughs> Go to Joshua chapter 5 real quick. Joshua chapter 5, amen. Amen. Don't, don't be calling me and say, hey, pastor, can I get some bail money? No. <laughs> I told you not to do that. <laughs> tell you there, he said, possessing the land. <laughs> possessing the land. <laughs> Joshua chapter 5. In verse 8, Joshua chapter 5, verse 8, New King James, it says this. It says, so it was when they had finished circumcising all the people, say covenant, that they stayed in their places in the camp till they were healed. Then the Lord said to Joshua, this day I have rolled away the reproach of Egypt or the world from you. Therefore, the name of the place is called Gilgal to this day. Now the children of Israel camped in Gilgal and kept the Passover for the 14th day of the month at twilight at the, on the plains of Jericho. And they ate of the produce of the land. On the day after the Passover, unleavened bread and parched grain on the very same day. Watch this. Then the manna ceased. Let me say it a different way. Then the system changed. Yes. Right. On the day after they had eaten the produce of the land and the children of Israel no longer had manna, but they ate the food of the land of Canaan that year. Now listen, listen. That's why I didn't bring you seed tonight. Because after last night, for the last time, you don't need anybody else to bring seed to you because God said he is the provider of all your seed. You got to be in faith and say, God, show, it where it, show me where it is. See, you got to be able to get a 20 and discern how much of that 20 belongs to God, $2 from the tithe, and then how much of that 18 does he ask for out of the desires of your heart? But pastor, but I need 25. No, no, you're missing the whole point because see, the moment you sow that seed, the 25 plus is guaranteed. Yeah. But if you don't shift systems, 
See, you, you can't possess Canaan with an old mindset. That's right. <laughs> Tell your neighbor, say, the real fruit's there, though. The real fruit's there. Listen, your inheritance comes in proportion to you recognizing your kingdom identity. Your inheritance comes in proportion. See, uh, I, I live in the state of Texas. And, you know, I've had people write to me, you know, because, you know, Texas is a pretty proud state. I don't know why it is, but it is. It's a proud state. Now, if you're from Texas, I'm not trying to offend you if you're watching this from Texas, because my, my church already knows. I say this all the time. I mean, everything that you see in Texas, it's made in the state. You can buy cookies in the shape of the Texas. They get candy in the shape of Texas. Yeah, every bridge they build, they got the whole state little shape. And it's the shape of Texas with a little star and everything, you know. And then, you know, talking about everything's big in Texas. Pastor Gina always said pride is too. So now, here's the question. Do you identify with being a U.S. citizen more than you identify with being a kingdom citizen? Do you identify with being somebody from the state of Louisiana more than you identify with being a kingdom person? Because if you are, then it's going to mess up that when you need to see something, you may start seeing it as a citizen of the U.S. versus a citizen of the kingdom. Because who, watch it, because what you identify with the most is the first vision that you see. You know, see, listen, the enemy knows it don't take much to get people off. Whatever you're going through, that's what he attacks. He come put pressure on it. This one time, I'll never forget this. Pastor Gina knows this. I always have to say that up front because people always want to say, well, does Pastor Gina know this story? Pastor Gina knows this story. Uh, I had this job as a, pro as a project manager, and so I was traveling literally every week. I would leave out on Monday morning on the first flight, normally fly home on the last flight on Friday, and sometimes not even make it back, and I had to fly back in on the first flight on Saturday morning. And I was working for this computer company that was based out of uh, California at the time. And, and it was a blessing to us. And, uh, and every week I had the same fight because at the time my vice president wanted to have a meeting at 10 a.m. Pacific time every Monday morning. And we lived in Mississippi. So I had to catch a flight, fly from Jackson, go to Memphis, connect from Memphis, go all the way and fly all the way to California. And so I'm doing this every week. So I'm doing this every week. So on this one particular flight, Pastor Ron was on it and I was headed to Nashville. He was my shepherd at the time. And uh, I'm sitting in first class and everything, and um, God, you know, upgraded me on this particular flight, you know, and I'm sitting there, and he comes in, and uh, the seat next to me was empty, and so he walked by. He said, uh, I said, hey, Pastor Ron, I saw him come on the plane. So I ain't ashamed to acknowledge my shepherd when I see him out in public. Amen. Amen. And, and I don't dare let nobody put their mouth on him. Because see, the moment you let somebody talk about your shepherd, you lost part of your grace. But see, if you realize that protecting your shepherd's integrity also impacted your harvest, Amen. see, you, you get a little more oomph about you. Yes. Well, Pastor, I don't, I, don't, I don't laugh at the jokes when they, when they, when they say about it. You know, I know, you know I, it's, it's okay. I mean, I, it ain't okay. Look, when your family want to talk about your shepherd at Thanksgiving and they don't want to come to the church, hey, it's fine. You don't want to come to church, that's fine. Say something else about my pastor. Let me show you what else I can do with this turkey bone. <laughs> do it again. Do it again. No, 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 don't do it. You pray for him. Amen. That was a joke. That was a joke. <laughs> Some of them looking at me going, yeah, it's just right down. <laughs> no, no. That was, that was a joke. That was a joke. <laughs> but you, do, you need to protect the integrity of your shepherd. You say, Pastor, what do you mean protect the integrity? No, no, you're not protecting them. You're protecting your thought life how you see them. And, and don't you get familiar? Because, see, I, I, I'm in Chicago. There's another pastor, too, you know, talking to him. And we were there in Chicago, and we had just sold our seat and everything. And this guy was talking about, he said, man, you always talk about Pastor Bill, this, Pastor Bill, this, Pastor Bill, that. I said, yeah. I said, man, I said, just, Pastor, I said, Virginia, I just love Pastor Bill so much. He said, man, he said, you know, I used to work on staff with him. And, you know, he was in a different state. And I said, oh, I didn't know you worked on staff with Pastor Bill. He said, always Pastor Bill. He said, man, he said, look, you don't know Bill like I know him. I said, hey, I said, hey, brother. I said, uh, I said, you know, I don't really know you like that. And I, I said, and you and I ain't really that close. All right? And I almost told him, man, I ain't that fully saved that I can't, you know, be like, well, that's what you say about my shepherd. Oh, I'm just saying, I remember when Bill, I said, I said, you call him by his first name one more time. 
What, what, what? You, you, you got a problem with it? I said, no, just say it. Go ahead and say it. I did not. Look, I had to repent. And, you know, and there was another gentleman sitting there. He said, now, you know who, what y'all used to do? And, 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 and he was trying to rise up in me, too. I was like, no, you, you stay down. Amen. Praise the Lord. You stay down. But I'm like, you don't get to call him. By name. I don't need to know what Bill did. But Pastor Bill has been releasing a grace on my life. Pastor Bill has been transferring knowledge and wisdom and understanding so that when I take a scripture and read it and get information, he's been enlightening me with revelation and showing me what God has for me in the fourth dimension. No, I'm not going to let you just say what you want to say about him. Tell you next I'm going to protect it. Why? Because see, watch this. Oh, I want you to see this. God never gave a map to anybody to Canaan but the shepherd. Moses, the plan that I showed you, the pattern that I showed you, this is how you're going to survive the wilderness. Nobody else knew it. They had to hear it from the shepherd. And if you're going to go into Canaan, your shepherd's mouth is one of the most critical things that God's going to use. You got to believe that every time they say something, you be like, ooh, that's got some anointing on it. I mean, if your shepherd get up, and say, look here, the Big Mac no longer is going to have sesame seeds on it. You need to be like, uh-oh, it's coming a smooth bun. <laughs> you need to believe it that much. Yeah. Y'all get what I'm saying? Okay, amen, praise the Lord. <laughs> now, 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 why is this so important? Because my mind is consistently processing data, processing data. You need to understand that the best program that can ever run through that computer mind of yours is the word of God. And it's designed for you to help you continually keep your soul renewed. Always thinking about who you are in Christ. Amen. Amen. Why? Because, see, God is a God of three key things. I always love these. Are the He's the key. Number one, he's the God of the bring up. See, God will bring me up. Come on, come on. Yeah, come on, come on, come on, come on. Come on. See, he's the God of the bring up. He's the God of the bring up. Tell your neighbor, say, he's the God of the breakthrough. And then, then this is my favorite right here. He also the God of the beat down. No, no, because he wants to go, go with me. Because I, when I say that, a lot of times people be like, Pastor, I don't like the way you said that. I said, okay, what you like? This is in the word. Look at Psalms 89 for me real quick. Amen. Turn to Psalms 89. See, next time the devil mess with you, you got to remind him. Yeah. Keep on messing with me, and you're going to find out just who my God is. <laughs> Psalms 89 and verse 20. Psalms 89 and verse 20. I have found my servant David with my holy oil. I have anointed him, with whom my hand shall be established. Also, my arms shall strengthen him. The enemy shall not outwit him, nor the son of wickedness afflict him. I will beat down his foes before his face and plague those who... Don't let the devil tell you he can stop you. Ain't the devil big enough to deal with your God. Tell your neighbor, say, this is the kind of God I serve. Now, now, now let me clarify beat down, though, because, see, you know, because I know y'all, y'all would be like, uh-huh, take my heels and my earring. No, 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 no. See, because a lot of times when you're in situations, it's normally just one person in the way. So I, I, this is the prayer I pray, especially for those of you in the workplace. Sometimes you're like, Lord, move them, transfer them. Promote them. I'm okay they get a temporary promotion. God clear them the path for me. Yes, sir. Yeah, it's okay. Be like, well, I don't want to see them get blessed. Let me tell you something. They can't get blessed more than what God's going to bless you. You just need the haters out the way. Amen? Tell your neighbor, say, this is the God I serve. All right? And it's important for you to be able to grab a hold of that because you need to understand that when you're going to face a giant, you have to face a giant knowing that, watch this, with the nature of God in you alive. Yes. Amen? Yes. You must believe in the covenant. Tell your neighbors, I believe in the covenant. Yes. And you must know who you are. Yes. See, I thought we were just singing a song just to be seen. No, no, no. I know who I am. Yes. And you know, there's that verse in there that says, in him is my identity. Yes. No, no, see, see, you can't just come and be like, ooh, I hope they sing my favorite song. No, no, you want to make sure they sing in the covenant. Yes. I mean, the enemy is attacking that industry so bad. You know, people, I mean, Pastor Regina had a song like that. She's like, oh, my God, what is wrong with these people? I mean, they sound just like the world. Well, Pastor, you know, we're just trying to make it a more modern beat. Modern beat going to keep you in the praying situation you're in. Okay, all right, tell your neighbors, I got to know who I am. Now, listen, number four is key. You will never rise higher than your current confession. 
I'm going to say it again. You will never rise higher than your current confession. Say this with me. Say, I am a king. I am a Lord. I have this image, and I found this image, I don't know, probably 15, 20 years ago. Uh, go to the next slide for me. Is it, and this right here is Jesus returning back with the saints. And on his thigh is a tattoo that says King of Kings and Lord of Lords. Tell your neighbor, say, oh, I'm in that number. I'm in that number. Yeah, 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 yeah. I, I want you to tell you. See, you got you to get something inside of you to tell you who you are. Tell your neighbor, say, Canaan is expecting me. I have a reservation. No, I mean, I want you to really think about that for a second. Yeah. That you're going, you already been assigned a breakthrough. Yes. Well, I'm believing God for a breakthrough. No, 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 no. You just need to receive the breakthrough. No, no, listen, listen. But I, and, and I'm not trying to come against anyone in what I'm saying. It's just that there are a lot of churchology things we say. Just because we heard other people saying it over and over and over, and then we get to repeating it because we think it sounds churchy. I'm believing God for. What do you mean you believe in God for? You're not believing God for a breakthrough. God's already given you the breakthrough. He's already given you the covenant. God, I receive what you've already provided. God, I confess what you said I am. Now, five key things you have to do around your confession. Tell your neighbor, say, number one, say this with me. Say, I am a king. Say, I am a lion. I am a Lord. I am a son. Say like you mean it. I am a son. And I am the righteous. Now, Pastor, how can you say that? Because the word says all those things about you. I want you to get bold. Proverbs chapter 30 and verse 30, he talks about the boldness of a lion. Now, you say, Pastor, why is that so important for me to understand that? Because, see, the more and more, it should be easy for you to say who you are when you really know who you are. I told you all the last night, um, and maybe the last time I was here, that one of the first things that happened to me was I, I learned to read, you know, so all this stuff that my grandma used to always pray for me and everything and tell me, you know, make sure you don't go do all this. Um, when you grow up in poverty, if you don't watch it, it's real easy for the enemy to try to tempt you with finances. And so men, let me say, I say this to men because it impacts men more than anything else. When this wealth started coming in, okay, you know, you got to watch out for the Miss Potiphar's. You know, because she, she, you know, she comes sashaying around. Okay? And you already know you don't look that great because you had to pray to get the wife you have. No, no, no. We had to, up, we had to upgrade. Come on. I mean, I, I, we had, don't, don't pretend. Amen? No, no. I mean, when I first met Pastor, don't get me wrong. Now, I mean, I was raised right. I mean, I had some manners and everything, you know. But, but I knew I was married out of my class. Amen. I was getting an upgrade. Yes, sir. No, no. I did. Listen, listen. When I married my wife, I mean, and I didn't intend to do it, but I brought poverty to her. Didn't even realize that God, God what's it? God recognizes the financial level on the head first. Yes, sir. Yeah, yeah. And because I come out of poverty and it was already inside of me, and it's not that I was working and had all this in. My daddy told me, you know, well, you got to get you a good job. You know, get you a good job, work hard. And so I did. I worked hard. But I didn't know what it meant to be a saver. I didn't know what it meant to be a sower. I didn't know what it meant to be a steward. And so all of a sudden now, I bring her down to where I am. So, I mean, I thank God. So, but listen, but when she comes sashaying around, you got to make sure, no, you don't say the wrong thing, but you got to be like, no, you need to go on with that now. And see, you got to say, I, I travel every week. I'm normally in a four or five star hotel somewhere. Pastor Virginia and I have a covenant that's unbreakable. Amen. Amen. You, you have to. I, I, I was down, <laughs> I was in Miami uh, this one particular time and I was there and I was like, you know what, I'm going to go grab me something to eat. And I was going to this particular restaurant. And when I got to the front desk there, the maitre d' met me. She said, sir, can I help you? I said, yeah. I said, I'm just trying to see if you have a table for one. I said, I don't want to sit at the bar. And she said, yeah, she said, I got a small table I can put you in. And this lady overheard the conversation. And she comes over. She said, um, she said, I hate to see you eat alone tonight. And I, I, said, I said, I ain't never alone. Uh -huh. yeah. And she said, uh, well, are you expecting somebody here? I said, well, no, not in the natural. I'm not expecting anybody here. She said, well, can I join you? I said, well, I don't know. I said, let's ask my wife. She said, I thought you said you were here by yourself. I said, well, I am. But I, so I called Regina. I said, hey, sweetheart. And I put on speakerphone. I said, there's a woman right here want to know if she can have dinner with me. She put on the phone. Put on the phone. <laughs> So 
Sister, look here. Sister girl fasted that night. She ran up out that place. She's like, no, 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 I'm so okay, sorry. She's like, I ain't even hungry. She told the lady in front of the you can cancel my reservation. Amen. I you can give him my table. Amen. I said, well, praise the Lord. Amen. Praise God. Amen. Praise the Lord. No, I mean, see, y'all like, no, you're supposed to be serious. You're in church now. Amen. Y'all got to start laughing. But I'm just saying, it was real. I mean, I'm like, God, what? Because God says, look, when I move you into this place, the enemy's going to try to do everything he can to get you off track. So anyway, I, I, let's go back to Pastor Ron real quick because you got to hear this story, right? So Pastor Ron comes on and he walks by me. I said, hey, I saw him. I said, I hit him on the side. He wasn't looking down at me. I said, hey, Pastor Ron. He said, hey, look at him. And Pastor Ron turned around. He said, hey, told everybody the first class. This is one of my members in the church. Y'all look right here. Of course, people looking around like, you know, that's not dignified. Why are you saying all that? He said, boy, he said, I bet your faith got this upgrade, didn't it? He said, boy, I'm so proud of you. He said, you know, I just finished teaching this stuff a couple weeks ago. He said, that boy using what I taught him, man. I mean, he proud. I mean, you know, boy, and I'm like, boy, yeah, that's right. I was using that word. And so he go on with that thing, and I hear the Spirit of God say, get Pastor on your seat. I said, okay. So I get up, and I go back. You know, and I start looking for him, you know, like in the front row and everything. And I keep walking. I'd be like, Lord, what are you doing this point? Amen. You know, and he, he, he one row from the bathroom at the very back. And I said, I said, Pastor Ron, I said, um, the Lord said, I'm supposed to give you my seat. He said, no, nah, your faith got there. He said, I'm, I'm not going to take your faith victory. I said, no, 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 no. You're not taking anything. I'm sowing it to you. And he said, he said, look, he said, I, I got Pastor Paige with me. He said, I, I can't do that and just leave her back here. Because she's looking at him like, you know, I said, no, I said, the seat next to me empty. And I've already talked to the stewards. And she said that she can sit with her. He said, oh, boy, get on out the way. Let me get my seat then. Amen. <laughs> He said, Paige, come on, don't move so slow. They're going to close the door. He, gra he grabbed his bag, reached up in the top, grabbed his bag down. He said, baby, come on. Now they're giving the close the plane door. We got to move. He said, brother, I'll probably right pronounce a hundredfold. I said, I'll receive. And I sit there, and I flew to California from Memphis. One door from the bathroom, one row of seats. And this is like February, March. And then every flight I took all the way through December, upgrade. 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 So I'm on this one particular flight, and I'm flying to California. I'm on Delta flight. Tell your neighbor, said, the enemy will try to stop you from going to Canaan. Because see, he's trying to mess with your identity. And so I'm sitting, and this lady gets the, the seat right next to me. She's in the window, and I'm there. And we, we, we get ready to take off and everything. She said, how are you doing, young man? I said, I'm doing fine, thank you. It was a you know, middle-aged Caucasian female and everything. You know. She said, um, she said, where are you headed to? I said, you know, I'm headed to L.A. I said, our office is out there. You know, so she's just making small talk. So I ain't paying And I got my Bible there, and I'm reading everything. She said, what are you reading? And I said, um, just studying, nothing in particular, you know, and everything. And then she said, um, you know, when you get tired of reading that, she said, you, you feel like just talking? I'm going, like, we're talking now. You know, because, listen, I, man, I know we slow sometimes. We just, amen. No, no, no. No, when your wife said that woman was hitting on you, don't go back like, nobody want to hit on me. No, you slow. Listen, it's natural. <laughs> And what I mean, I don't mean you slow like you're not smart. What I'm saying is you're not pick, you're not discerning what's taking place in the spirit realm. You know what I'm saying? Because see, that's that, them devils. They they work in that thing, and they depend on you to be like, well, you know, I just said hey to her. Wasn't no big deal. I mean, you know, yeah, okay, all right. And so, you know, she she's talking to me and everything. She said, uh, you work out a lot. I said, man, because I thought it was odd. She said, you know, yeah. Uh, I said, excuse me? But, the, but I had just met this other lady. She was one of the stewardess. And she had introduced herself to me when I first sat down. She said, good morning, Mr. Shaw. I said, good morning. How are you doing? She said, thank you so much. You know, she's thanking me for being my status level and everything. I said, thank you. She said, uh, I'm going to be assigned to taking care of you. She said, I'm going to make sure this is the best first class trip you ever have. She said, I see you got your sword with you. Now, okay, that, that was key number one. I said, yeah, yeah. She said, she said, I don't leave without mine. And she goes back and she fixed me. I asked her to fix me some cranberry juice. She came back and she, she, she lifted up her little tray and she had her Bible there with her. She said, I keep it always up here in the front with me in the galley. I said, amen, praise God. And so we come back. And so she see this lady talking to me and she looked, she said, now you leave him alone. And I mean, I didn't say nothing to her. And she said, you leave him alone. And so we, we take off and everything. And then the lady gets to where she's been pretty forceful. She said, hey, what size shoes you wear? I said, what? And so when she come back through, I asked the lady, I said, uh, 
can you move me? She said, Mr. Shaw, the plane's full and everything. She said, and she said, don't let the devil run you. She said, in the name of Jesus, I bind you. I mean, and she's serving people, you know, putting coke and everything. And she come back buying everything. And she said, and he's going to rest with sweet sleep. She said, in the name of Jesus, you foul demonic spirit. And of course, the woman just looking at her like, you know, most people be like, call the captain. This woman just called me a devil. And he didn't phase this woman. So we, we're about halfway through the flight. And then the woman says, here. And now she sets a key down in the middle of the night. I said, what's that? She said, that's the key to my apartment in L.A. That didn't move me. Because what, what I am, I mean, it just didn't phase me. Now, we were still coming out of our financial thing. Then she reaches in her purse and she says, and I'll let you have all of this. And it was about $20 bills. Because see, Satan, Satan is going to do everything he can to keep you from possessing the land. Okay? So I, I was like, I said, no, you know, I, I'm going to pass on that and everything. And then she come back. She said, I told you to leave him alone. And then she, and I was like, I, I thought she was just, oil came out of her hand. I was like, oh, Lord. She, what the, she said, and it was all on it. She looked up at that one, and she said, you foul spirit. I ain't scared of you. In the name of Jesus, I bind you up. And then, she, then the guy behind me said, bro, I'll change seats with you. He said, I'll sit next to her. She's like, no, I don't want him sitting up there. That woman came back through again. She said, I told you to shut up. She threw that oil on that woman again. And that woman all of a sudden, that woman just went to sleep. Didn't say another word for another hour and a half till we get ready to get off the plane. She said, you left the key. I said, I don't want any guy behind me going like, I'll take your key. I'm like, okay, y'all devil's going to do what you want to do. Why am I telling you this? When you start to see that wealth come in, the devil's going to use everything that was in your soul to try to pull you back. He's going to grab generational curses. He's going to try to grab stuff that was in your great, great, great grandparents and bring it back. And you got to say, no, that thing's been cut off by the root. I am the righteousness of God. I am a king. I am restored. I am redeemed. You can't go out and hang out with the people you used to hang out with when you get to this new level that God called you to. God going to give you a whole new set of friends. Tell your neighbor, because I am the righteous. I got to hurry. I got to hurry. Watch this. He says, 2 Peter 1 and 3 says, His divine power has granted to us all things that pertain to life and godliness. Tell your neighbors, all, all things. And godliness through the knowledge of him who calls us to his own glory and excellence. Tell your neighbors, 1 Peter 2 and 9. But you are a chosen race, a royal priesthood, a dedicated nation, God's own purchase special people that you may set forth the wonderful deeds and display the virtues and perfections of him who called you out of darkness into the marvelous light. Tell your neighbor, say, because I believe God. I believe God. I'm going to give you these last three things and I want you to be able to walk in this and be able to have this because see, when you go into this new possession of Canaan, he's going to be changing your environment, your expectation, and your economy. Tell your neighbor, say, I live on a kingdom economy. Now, and he's going to do it through three core things. Number one, he's going to shift your conviction. See, see, your conviction is going to have to be based on a kingdom paradigm. Yeah, and see, when you ch your belief system has to change when you change the system. It, it can't stay in the same place it has always been. So you got to get to a point where you realize, I think differently than I used to be. When the Bible talks about the renewing of your mind, he's talking about you consistently, constantly, always taking the things the world say to you and running it through the world's covenant consideration first. You run it through the kingdom's consideration. I said the world, I meant the kingdom. Yeah, yeah. Amen? Number two, you got to tell you, I got to develop courage. Oh, come on, say it like you mean it. Say it. Boldness to act and so. See, see. Tell your neighbor, say, the fruit's real. Now, how many people, I mean, just be honest now. How many people say, I, I, I'll take that too, Pastor. What you had up there, I'll take that. How many would say that? Yeah. The, these two boxes that were up there. Okay, now, okay, I'm looking for your hands. How many of you say, I would have taken that, Pastor? Okay, now, wait, 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 hold on a second. Now, listen to me. There were 10 other people who saw the same thing they did. But yet they didn't take it. Right, right. So it, it has something to do. It's more than just seeing it. Yeah, right. Oh, I'll tell you, neighbor, I'm going to have to make a change here. I'm going to have to make a change here. See, he, see, see, the word of God is the most powerful thing that exists, period. And if God cannot lie, 
When that word comes in you, it has the ability to shift you and change you. I gave the example of how I would go and I would walk every day. I came up to the church today. About 2.30, uh, I got out and went to the gym and got a chance to work out and listening to the word and everything, you know, and I was like, okay, so God, so I'm just going to give me a little bit of cardio, did some weights and stuff, and just kind of just enjoying myself in the word. And uh, I came, I said, Lord, I said, let me, I'm going to go up. I said, I know there's an anointing on that ground. I said, so I'm just going to come up here. I said, now, I, I don't know that they've walked around this church before, but I said, if I had to perceive it, they, I believe they probably have at one point in time. I said, so I'm going to walk in the footsteps of some great people. Because see, that, that's what God was asking the 12 spies to go do. Exactly. Go find a path to the promise yeah. so the others can follow. Yeah. Uh, okay, okay. Yeah. So go teach a word that other people can grab hold of and go live the life and the example of what you're living. And so I came up here and I walked in the, down in front, you know, then I walked around, you know, and walked around the side and everything. And then I came down the other side right there and I looked in there. I said, ooh, that thing almost finished. I said, wait a minute. And so tonight, Pastor, I want to have the first meal paid for, so I'm going to pay you for the first meal in the cafe. <laughs> when I looked in there, I said, I'm sowing a seed for billings. Yeah. And so I said, for anybody else mess up a napkin, I'm going to pay in advance. Now, I don't care who you feed with it, but I want my seed to buy the first meal in the house. Yeah. He said, Pastor, where'd that come from? When you're renewing your mind, yeah. God can speak to you. God can tell you what to sow. God can tell you when to sow. See, see, let me tell you something. I couldn't come to something like this and let the devil stop me from putting my seed into the soil with an expectation of supernatural harvest. I couldn't watch. Watch this. I can't watch Joshua and Caleb walk out with fruit and I don't leave with any. You know, I'm be like, oh, no, uh, no, I, look, I, I'm, I'm getting this right here. Wait, girl, you know you need that $5 off again. Look, God will send angels to push me if he has to. I'm putting my seed in the ground. I'm going to walk in my harvest. I, I have my key. I'm going to the post office to get my change of address for him. I'm going to pack my box. I done gave you three natural things to do to help your mind. Buy a key, change of address, pack a box. Then the next week, pack another box. Make your family uncomfortable enough to where they say something. And when they start talking about, it don't make no sense why we're doing that, then get an agreement so you can get your box unpacked. Yes. Yes. Tell the children, put your children's toothpaste, their toothbrush, and their Nintendo in that box. The way every time they want to play it, it's in the box. Yes. Mama, why am I Nintendo in the box? Because you ain't praying like you need to pray for us to get out of here before it can be unpacked. <laughs> Let me tell you something. They'll start praying like you wouldn't believe, boy, I'm telling you right now. Put that 10 speed in a box. You said, Pastor, they don't tell. Listen, I'm talking about everything you can pack that's going to make your flesh hurry up and get into agreement. That's what you want to do because you're going into Canaan. You get ready to go possess the land. Now, why is this so important? Last scripture of the night, last scripture of the night. It's a caution for your conviction. Go to Joshua chapter 18. Joshua chapter 18. <laughs> Glory to God. Hey, hey neighbor, I'm learning something tonight. I'm learning something tonight. Glory, glory to God. I can't keep you late tonight. I know, you know, you know, back in the day, I mean, you know, y'all wouldn't even be dressed yet. <laughs> Hallelujah. Because, you know, you can't get in free until, you know, well, anyway. <laughs> Joshua chapter 18, amen, amen. Only the people who know laughing at that, amen, praise the Lord. <laughs> Joshua chapter 18, verse 1. Now the whole congregation of the children of Israel assembled together at Shiloh and set up the tabernacle of meeting there. And the land was subdued before them. Tell your neighbor, said, the land's already subdued. But there remained among the children of Israel seven tribes which had not yet received their inheritance. Then Joshua said to the children of Israel, then Pastor Tony said to CLBC, how long will you neglect to go and possess the land which the Lord God of your fathers have given you? You can't get a harvest without a seed. You can't go beyond your current confession. And God is not going to force you to receive what he's already given. God sent me from McKinney, Texas to come alongside of you and come into agreement and to tell you the fruit is real. The land is there. Listen, the word possession, we see it in Deuteronomy. And I don't have time to get there and read it tonight. Just I want to be respectful of your time. He told them, he says, Moses. I want you to go take them to possess 
what I've already given. I'm going to say it again. Possess what I've already given. And then if you go home tonight and study and you look at that word possess and look it up in your concordance, you'll find that the word there is, that there's, and there's a long list of words that go in there, but one of the words that's in there, it says, dispossess the temporary landowners. I, I like to say it this way. Possession is a verb, not a noun. It requires an active action of faith that you got to put some effort into. You got to put some seed into. You won't have to put some confession into. You won't have to put some meditation into. See, when I get ready to confess the word of God, the first thing I got to do, I make sure it's, it's promise based. It has to be based on the word of God. The next thing it has to be is personalized. Then the next thing it has to do is be present tense. The next thing it has to do, it has to be persistent. Amen. Tell your neighbor, say, I believe it right now. I grab hold of it right now. And God, I thank you that you've already blessed me. When I was in that hospital and they telling me all that stuff, I said, Father, I believe believe in the name of Jesus that you have healed Tony now in the name of Jesus and I was saying it with bold I was saying it with passion I was saying it with persistence I was saying it personalized I was making it present tense every time I, they come in and say well Mr. Shaw you know uh, we think I don't care what you think I'm talking about what I know they said well you know the doctor feels I don't care about what he feels that's what we're finishing tonight I know about what God said and you got to get to a point to where you go promised land is mine I'm not going to let the enemy stop me. I'm not going to let the enemy block me. I'm going to develop a conviction on the inside of me. I'm going to have the courage to do what I'm supposed to do. And I'm going to say it consistently over and over. And I'm going to develop the confidence to go and take the word. 1 John 5 and 14 and 15, this is the confidence. Tell your neighbor, say, this is the confidence. They, 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 this is the confidence that is in me. This is the confidence. I want you to get bold about it. I want you to train your mouth. I want you to discipline. I want you to put your mouth through boot camp. The way it never says anything that God did not already say. And then every day. Say this with me. Say, I am a king. I am a lord. I am a lion. And I am a possessor of land. I am a king. I am a lord. I am a lion. And I am a possessor of things. I'm a possessor of land. I'm a possessor of cars. I'm a possessor of houses. I'm a Matter of fact, last night I made the comment about you, you know, not wanting to, you, you, and the Lord told me, he said, go back and tell him this. If you just want to live in an apartment the rest of your life, God says he will allow it under one condition. You buy the whole building. <laughs> and then you live in one of them. Yes, sir. Ah, uh, come on. Yes, tell your neighbor, said, I'm a landowner. I am the righteousness of God. I'm going to leave you with this last impartation. I decree in the name of Jesus that your past will no longer interfere with your future. I speak and decree the blessing of Abraham on your life. According to Galatians 3.29, you have a direct connection to it. I decree that everywhere the soles of your feet shall tread, that you shall walk in the authority and the dominion that God has already established. You are a landowner. You are three generations rich right now in the name of Jesus. No weapon that has been formed against your finances shall ever prosper. You are the head and not the tail. You are above only and not beneath. You are the righteousness of God in everything that you do. Everywhere your hands go, that prosperity, increase, and overflow should be a part of it. I'm telling you right now, God is releasing people by the divine favor of God to give unto you, press down, shaking together, and running over. You have been anointed for the hundredfold return. I decree in the name of Jesus, it's being released to you. It's continual. It's flowing. It's moving. Currency right now is coming to you. The wealth of the wicked is being transferred into the hand of the righteous. God says you are his son. God says you need to know who you are. I decree right now that 2024 is your best financial year ever. And nothing that the enemy will do is going to move you backwards ever again. This is your year. God has released you with the seed. He's giving you anointed soil. Yes. He's anointed you as a sower. Yes. He's identified himself as the source. Yes. 
and he's released a continual supply. Tell your neighbor, say, I submit and I shift systems. You are the sower. You control the destiny of your outcome. And there's nothing the enemy can do that will prevent it or stop it. I pronounce the full blessing of Abraham on your life. You've been blessed and you cannot be cursed. You've been blessed and it cannot be reversed. You've been blessed and no man can stop it. You've been blessed and no demon can hinder it. You've been blessed and God says and more and more you and your children in Jesus mighty name. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Pastor Regina and I, we love you. We speak a blessing over you. And we decree that you are in your best life. In Jesus' mighty name. Tell your neighbors that this is my season. And I know who I am. Amen. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah.